Greetings. A warm welcome to one and all present in this platform. On behalf of the PG and Research Department of English at Almigo Palaniandavar Arts College for Women, I welcome you all to this two-day capacity building program on trends in technology. Nowadays, who is not aware of technology and technological education? No, I could say everyone is very smart in handling the technopedia. A few years back, we all would have been searching the pages in some books and we have been scribbling in notebooks about what our teachers or professors have taught us in classrooms. That we usually take notes and we used to memorize or by heart it and that will do it in our exam. But nowadays, that process, all those process were completely banned, I should say. That is because of technopedia. What is technopedia? Nothing. The technological advancement that has brought us to a greater development, uh, which is uh, equally that is compensated by Wikipedia, I should say. And what are the browsers? Oh, no. We have lots and lots of browsers and browsing facilities, which even adults do not know, but the teenagers know very well. Everyone has a thorough knowledge about computers or laptops or mobile phones and that too which has higher resolution and with Android system and they are all the teenagers particularly they are very very much expertized in using Android mobile phones. Yes, of course, but what are the facilities that we do not know that we must think at least for a minute. We would have come across many applications in Android mobile phones or laptops either uh, somehow or other by either by our parents or colleagues or friends or some relatives or somehow we would have come up across many applications but how should we use those applications in a proper way and one particular thing as we the learners of English as a language must know how to communicate and how to deal with the trends which are developing in the technological system. So that is the point where our head of the department, I should say, she is the main reason for developing such a wonderful event for these two days. It's really the capacity building program where the students or the participants they build their capacity of using the technology and technological trends. One of the resource persons, Dr. Indrani, Associate Professor of English, Government College of Education for Women, Coimbatore, today she is going to deal with the online resources that are available for the learners of English as a language and also English literature. So I now I hand over the session to Mrs. V. Jodhimani, Assistant Professor of English, Almega Palyanar Arts College for Women, to introduce the speaker of today's program, Dr. Indrani, Associate Professor of English, Government College for, of Education for Women, Coimbatore. And further, the next session will be handled by Dr. Indrani, Associate Professor of English, and she will thereby explain what are the online resources available for the learners of English as a language and also the students of English literature. Thank you one and all. A yeah, pleasant good morning to all. I am Mrs. V. Jodhimani, Assistant Professor of English at Migo Parani Under Arts College for Women. I welcome the most respected faculties and the students of various institutions to attend the today's program, Learners of English Language and Literature. I would like to thank our management for permitting to conducting the program. I am very much indebted to our principal, Madam Dr. N. Bhuvaneshwari, Almigo Palanandar Arts College for Women, who has been backboard by permitting us to proceed it. I would like to extend my heartly thank to Mrs. P. Selvi, Head of the Department of English, Almigo Palanandar Arts College. I would like to thank Mrs. L. Kartigayini, one of the coordinators who shouldered today's program. I welcome you all to do this program to make a successful one. I would like to introduce the resource person, most respected madam, Dr. Indarani, Associate Professor in English. Her area of specialization is English language teaching and literature. She has 23 years of teaching for undergraduate students, 10 years for teaching postgraduate students. She completed a project founded by centrally sponsored scheme. 
She guided two young field students at Bardia University. She had published a book and research papers. She is a member of the Board of Studies, a member of Academic Council for various colleges. She acted as a resource person for various colleges and examiner of Bardia University and Tamil Nadu Teaching Education University. She has participated at flying school during examinations. A trainer for DST project at Abhinav Slingham University, staff selection committee member in Kendra Vidyalaya Kaimitur. She had been in additional in charge of principal for over five years. She conducting coaching classes for students preparing various government examinations. Now I would like to hand over the session to the resource person. Students, I want to and of Sarki, head of the Department of English, for having given me this opportunity to address you on the topic of online resources for learners of English language and literature. In these testing times of coronavirus pandemic, this topic is all the more relevant because the students have to depend more on online resources now than their teachers. The internet can be called a highway of thousand ways. One can easily get lost because of the sheer volume of information available. It is important to know about the right resources and to choose the relevant websites for the purpose of study. So what we are going to do now is to see only a tip of the iceberg. You look for and you definitely find some gems and diamonds that will be of use to your knowledge acquisition, practical skills, research and examination processes. With this short introduction, I would like to give you an inkling of a few resources that I have found to be immensely useful and interesting. Let's go to the PPT. So, the topic is online resources for learners of English language and literature. So this resource, these resources that we are going to see range from very simple resources like uh, the Google and uh, Wikipedia. So any student knows very well where to look for uh, information. So they Google it and Google will immediately direct you to Wikipedia. So Wikipedia is a very common source um, of course, you, you cannot use it for research purposes because it is not an authentic source. So you have to uh, uh, seek other websites which are authentic, but for your uh, general uses, Wikipedia is a great tool. Now, this printing press, invention of the printing press, democratizes, democratized the availability of uh, resources to uh, literature students and other students. Uh, Gutenberg printing press was uh, a tool that brought about a dramatic social and cultural revolution. So there was a sudden widespread dissemination of printed works, books, tracts, posters, and papers. With this gave direct rise to the European revolution. But later, there was another Gutenberg, a new Gutenberg, which digitized the resources and you have a project, uh, project Gutenberg, a site which offers uh, more than 57,000 free ebooks. So, it, this is also uh, greatly useful for uh, students of literature. Now, for college and school students, there is a very useful uh, um, area see, uh, which offers notes, spark notes, cliff notes, schmook, book rags, grade saver, jiffy notes. These are some of the sources. So there are some free materials available, Mate uh, resource materials, reference materials uh, uh, freely available. So you can look for uh, chapter-wise summaries, uh, essay type for questions, even quizzes in these. So after learning about a, um, a novel, for example, in these sites, you can also take a quiz to test your knowledge. Now you have YouTube videos. Um, that there, there is a particular uh, set of videos called English videos, English videos. 
So that is the uh, reason why they have named it Ingrid. So there are some wonderful teachers uh, starting from Manel Early, uh, Jill, James, Rebecca, Benjamin, Adam, Emma. They cover a wide range of topics, grammar, vocabulary, usage, poetry, accents. So um, you learn, you have the opportunity to learn from the authentic teachers. They are not uh, um, teachers uh, who, who, uh, who, for whom English is a second language. They are first language users and uh, it will be very useful. Um, I will also share with you a video, um, an Igvid video, uh, Jill's video. She will uh, give you uh, what is the difference between listen and hear. So it is a great, uh, greatly useful video. Please watch this. Hi, I'm Jill at ingvid.com and today we have a lesson on two verbs, listen and hear. And we're going to look at the ways that you use them because they're a bit similar. They're both to do with your hearing and listening you, when you're using your ears. So um, it's a little confusing sometimes for people to know when to use listen and when to use here. So I've got a few examples here to try to show what context they can be used in. Okay, so let's have a look first at listen, which is quite an active thing. You're really concentrating when you're listening, you're listening to a piece of music, really thinking about it as you're listening. So it's quite active. So listening to something, you're using the preposition with it. Listening to the radio, listening to a CD, listening to. Um, somebody might say to a friend, oh, you never listen to me. I'm telling you something, but you're not listening. You're thinking about something else. You never listen to me. So to, again, there. You don't concentrate on what I'm saying, okay? And there's another way of using listen. You can listen out for something. That's a, a different preposition. Um, if you're in an office and your colleague needs to go out, and they're expecting a phone call, they might say to you, will you listen out for the phone and answer the phone for me while I'm not here? Take a message maybe. Will you listen out for the phone? So it's quite an active listening, focusing, concentrating on the sound. Okay. Um, compared with that, to hear, it's a little bit more passive. You sort of receive the sound waves into your ears, whether you decide to or not. Um, so... Someone might say, did you hear that strange noise just then? You weren't listening for a noise, but you heard a noise. It sort of came in through your ear and to your brain, and your brain recognised, oh, what was that noise? So did you hear that strange noise? Okay. And another one, if you don't hear what someone says, could you speak up, please? Meaning speak more loudly. I can't hear you. So you, you wouldn't say, I can't listen you. That, that's not right. I can't hear you. The sound isn't getting into my ear. Okay. If a friend wants to tell you about something and you don't really, you're not interested really. I don't want to hear about that. I don't want to receive that information. Okay. Um, and then finally, last example, have you heard, so this is the past tense, have you heard from your sister recently? So to hear from someone, another preposition, um, is to receive maybe a phone call. You're not expecting it, maybe the phone rings, you answer it. Ah, it's your sister. You've heard from 
your sister. Okay, so um, I hope that helps to explain the difference between listen and hear. Listen more active, hear more just receiving passively. Okay, so if you'd like to test your understanding of this, um, please go to the website ingvid.com and do the quiz. And if you found this lesson helpful, please subscribe to my channel on YouTube and hope to see you again soon. Okay, bye. The next set of uh, videos that are available are uh, John Green's Crash Course English Literature videos. So, Crash Course means very fast um, uh, courses. For 10 minutes, they talk, but uh, the speech is very fast, but uh, it is information uh, packed uh, videos. They are information packed videos. I'll also show you, share with you. Some of the, the um, videos of uh, uh, John Green's uh, Crash Book Literature, Things Fall Apart, To Kill a Mockingbird, Langston Hughes and the Harlem Renaissance, Hamlet, 100 Years of Solitude, Macbeth, Poetry of Emily Dickinson. So I have given you only what interested me, but you have a lot of uh, videos over there. You can uh, watch them. So this next source i am going to talk about is jennifer esl so this uh, lady is uh, is an english teacher uh, an american english teacher who talks to you about a lot of uh, topics like intonation grammar fluency vocabulary reading comprehension very patiently she teaches uh, things um, for second language learners so you uh, please make use of them and next source is open um, sources, open learning sources. So you have first, I have listed Spyam, um, Desi source, EDX, EDX, Coursera, Future Learn, MIT Open Courseware, uh, Stanford, Harvard, Yale University's uh, programs. So they conduct degree programs, certificate courses and other uh, courses, diploma courses. So students make use of these uh, uh, resources. Uh, Swayam.gov.in has let us see that. History of in language and literature, feminist writings, IIT Madras. These two courses are uh, offered by IIT Madras. So for a student who is pursuing um, education degree course in a local institution, these things are a boon, really. Uh, IIT Madras uh, offers courses on English literature. So, B. Ed. English uh, is a course offered by English and Foreign Languages University, Hyderabad. This is a central government, university, central university, and this uh, course is very useful for aspiring uh, teachers. Course Era is an education focused technology company founded by Stanford professors. So it charges a heavy fee for if you want a certificate, but if you just use it as a source, um, as um, a source for uh, your needs, then uh, it's fine. Okay, you may not uh, get a certificate, but uh, nevertheless, it is a very useful source. You see here, I have shown a page from that website. Improve your English communication, English for career development, uh, write professional emails in English, speak English professionally in person, online, and on uh, something else there, there. And business English communication skill, business English for non native speakers. English uh, for business and the entrepreneurship. So like this, you have a lot of courses which are very, very useful uh, to people 
who learn english for specific purposes not for not uh, uh, for a general degree but for specific purposes and literature also you have a lot of uh, courses some of the courses offered by coursera modern and contemporary american poetry english for journalism these courses are offered by the university of pennsylvania learn english intermediate grammar specialization this is a course offered by university of california business english arizona state university offers this creative writing offered by wesleyan university writing and editing offered by university of Michi michigan so you will find all these courses are for uh, specific purposes so how useful it must be for people who look for such courses so there is another uh, website called edx it's a massive open online course mooc provider it offers some courses at no charge it's a non profit organization and you have a page from uh, their website edx website so you have upper intermediate english business and modern life upper intermediate english business and industry em sat english preparation level 1 this is for students who after their uh, higher secondary level um, those who want to pursue uh, 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 undergraduate course in uh, uh, america may take this exam sat exam scholastic aptitude test so there is this english preparation they they prepare you for that test upper intermediate english business and globalization using email for networking in uh, english so those um, uh, girls and boys who opt to become secretaries um, uh, yeah who would like to help for the managers so they have this uh, handy tool for uh, um, learning about the email and all that conversational english skill upper intermediate english business and technology uh, english for doing business in asia speaking uh, you have other uh, courses for other skills listening writing reading etc general academic english english for journalists preparing to network in english english for doing business in uh, writing business in asia i think so such uh, tailor made courses which will help you to uh, choose uh, know what is relevant to your needs some of the courses offered in edx edx the ancient greek hero poetry in america whitman harvard university so those who have a paper on american literature um, will find this useful and uh, uh, those who study about uh, drama for them because uh, english uh, drama is very much related to greek drama and they may find this useful see both these courses are offered by harvard university shakespeare on the page and in performance is offered by wellesley university english composition research and writing is offered by arizona uh, state university so these courses are very highly useful future learn is another site it's a digital education platform wholly owned the owned by the open university in milton keynes england it's a massive open online course mooc learning platform and uh, there are about 143 uh, partners from uk and international other countries including non university partners there are even uh, some partners like uh, macmillan this press you know and uh, which are not university oriented partners but still it's a very very great uh, so resource the first platform <clears throat> future learn was the first platform to enable students to earn credits towards a degree from a top uk university from their tablets and smartphones before that they could access courses only from their laptops or computers but here you have um, even mobile learners joining future learn has good quality it's free it doesn't charge you for information for uh, getting information doesn't charge you it's 
certificate is charged, of course. So that is a page showing uh, courses from um, Future Learn. So there is an interesting uh, program on Robert Burns, poems, songs, and legacy. See, you see, they are all highly rated, you know, 4.6 out of 5, uh, 4.8 out of 5. So this is the rating given by the users of these courses. So after uh, uh, studying these courses, they have rated them. Robert Burns, Poems, Songs and Legacy. Uh, here, uh, it is University of Glasgow course. An introduction to screenwriting. So there are people who are uh, fond of working um, uh, for films, you know, and they can make use of this program. Fairy tales, meanings, messages, and morals. How to read a novel. Um, what does it mean to be human? An introduction to the humanities. Start writing fiction. Pictures of youth. An introduction to children's visual culture. Poetry. How to read a poem. See, so many techniques um, and strategies are given to read poetry. So these are some of the programs offered on Future Learn. And I also have some other courses, understanding IELTS. IELTS means uh, International English Language Testing System. British Council conducts this test. Those who want to pursue their education, PG or UG, uh, in England, uh, in Australia, in uh, uh, New Zealand, Canada, uh, even US, some of the US universities, they would like to take this test, right? So this um, British Council also trains people. Uh, they, it offers courses, teaching languages in primary schools, Robert Burns, Jane Austen, William Wordsworth, poetry, people and plays. So all universities which we have only uh, heard of, you know, they are offering these courses. That is um, a video um, offered by um, this Swayam. Okay, and please see this video, and you will enjoy it. It is a, it's a, it's a, it's a video on Shakespeare's tragedies. Let's take a look at the three kinds of plays that Shakespeare wrote. Tragedies, comedies and histories. In the film about Shakespeare's London, Dr Chris Lautaris mentions some of Shakespeare's great tragedies that were performed at the Globe. During the first six or seven years of the opening of the Globe, he produces some of his most memorable plays, including the great tragedies, Hamlet, Othello, King Lear and Macbeth. Tragedies are plays which usually have a sad story. The main characters in tragedies often have the kind of personality which gets them into trouble. One of the tragedies that we'll look at on this course is the play Hamlet. Prince Hamlet of Denmark is a philosophical and intelligent young man, but he has problems. He suffers from depression and his behaviour is unpredictable. In the play, we observe Hamlet after the sudden death of his father. Hamlet has to discover who killed his father and then decide what he's going to do about it with tragic consequences. Hamlet is shocked that his mother didn't know that his uncle killed his father. He doesn't sort of believe it. Of course, many Shakespearean tragedies involve death, often violent death, and there are no fewer than 13 suicides in Shakespeare's plays. Three of the plays that you're going to look at on this course are tragedies. Romeo and Juliet in week two, Macbeth in week three, and Hamlet in week six. Actors will tell you what happens in the plays 
and you'll explore some of the themes together. There is another course called Swayam Prabha Channel 1 Humanity Studies. Swayam Prabha uh, is uh, uh, offered by uh, MHRD, Government of India. You have uh, more than 37 channels and this Channel 1 is uh, related to English studies. So you have BA Honours English program being conducted by Swayam Prabha. And this um, is uh, a course which op is offered by a very reputed institution. And my last Dutch is Mending Wall, Elegy Written in the Country Churchyard, Sonnet 116, The Spanish Tragedy, are some of the uh, useful programs offered by this. The next thing we are going to see is gamification principles. So gamification is the application of game design elements and game principles in non-game contexts. For example, learning is not a game context, uh, but you introduce some elements which are found commonly in computer games. So there is uh, this rewarding system, uh, giving you grades, points, Gamification has positive effects on in individuals. So students feel uh, gratified when they achieve something. So this principle is made use of in these uh, games. So you uh, find this uh, icon, Duolingo, is Duolingo icon. So this uh, very good uh, app, which gives you um, an idea about uh, how to learn languages, not only English. Those who want to learn other languages will find this very useful. So it's uh, Duolingo is a language learning platform that includes a language learning website and app, as well as a digital language proficiency assessment exam. So finally, there is an exam after learning and Duolingo courses include advertisement, but if you pay a small amount, so those uh, advertisements are removed. The language learning website, this is the language learning website, and this app offers more than 81 different language courses across 37 languages. So this app has about 300 million registered users, users across the world. Hello English is another app which consists of 475 interactive lessons. So you have to be interactive and you have to play the games associated with reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And this has uh, used the principles used in gamification. It has a 
a bilingual dictionary available in 22 languages, which is an added advantage. Best free language learning apps are, um, in addition to Duolingo and Hello uh, English, you have Hello Talk, Talk Mind Snack, Busu, Babel, Memrise, Lead, Lingua.ly. So, Remix of Classics is another resource. So, you have the novel Emma, Pride and Prejudice. These novels are remade nowadays. For example, uh, you have Charles Dickens' David Copperfield, a new film has come, a remake, a remake of the older uh, David Copperfield movie. In that movie, uh, the character of David Copperfield is played by, a, uh, by an Asian, by an Indian. So you have some remake. Traditional classrooms are not interesting because the language is difficult and boring as far as these novels are uh, in, uh, concerned. For example, you can't expect a student to read David uh, Copperfield in original uh, now, now. So you have to make uh, it attractive uh, in other formats, introducing literature in an interesting manner. So this serves the purpose of uh, Mm, uh, introducing literature in an interesting manner. So this will help you. So I have shown the screenshots uh, of uh, this, this is a screenshot of uh, uh, Lizzie Bennett, uh, Elizabeth Bennett. It is a uh, truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a great uh, fortune must be in want, want of a wife. That is an opening line of Pride and Prejudice. But this line is printed on a t-shirt. Um, at the back, you have the rest of the sentence. I'll show you a video. Um, this is, uh, uh, is, the, is the screenshot of uh, Emma Approved. Emma Approved is the company owned by uh, Emma, uh, a matchmaking company. So the character Emma is here um, changed to suit our times so you will find it very interesting so you'll watch a video you'll you'll watch a video of uh, emma approved here emma woodhouse beautiful clever and brilliant there are many intriguing female entrepreneurs in the love and lifestyle industry but none are more dynamic or have more potential than young Ms. Woodhouse. So I run the matchmaking lifestyle division of the Developing Highbury Partners Lifestyle Group. I know, complicated. But in nine words, I make your life better and I never fail. Currently, I hold a perfect 19 for 19 client success record. And you wanna know who's number 20? Meet Ryan Weston, 35. You've heard of Cuddly Cupcakes? The one with over 200 locations across the greater United States? Yeah, CEO. Meet Annie Taylor, personal chef and power homemaker. Her convection baking skills would blow the buttons off your cashmere cardigan. Mr. Cupcake Mogul, Ms. Power Homemaker. Perfect for each other, right? But how perfect? They put a ring on it, and all because of me. Who am I? I am Emma Woodhouse, and this marriage is Emma approved. So let's talk about Annie and Ryan, two perfect people who may have never met, may have never locked eyes across a crowded room, and may never have locked lips on the beach at sunset. Boom! Picture, cause it happened! Emma? Yes? Uh, are you talking to yourself? No, I'm talking to the world. Seriously, what are you doing? Documenting. Alex Knightley, partner, business development, bookkeeping, boring stuff. Important stuff? Still boring. Still important? Boring me and now them. Who is them? The future editors of this documentary. Okay, and what exactly is it that we're documenting? My greatness. For what purpose? Future achievements. What type of achievements? Like when I received my prestigious Lifetime Achievement Award in Lifestyle Excellence. Bettering the world one life at a time. I'll be like Oprah, but better. <laughs> it's not a joke. Oh, I know. Well, I'll let you keep doing... Uh, 
whatever this is. Documenting my greatness for when I receive my future Lifetime Achievement Award in Lifestyle Excellence. And when you get a moment post-greatness documenting, I have some important, boring stuff to talk about. Okay, yeah, yeah. Go now, go. Busy, busy. So, back to Annie and Ryan. Or should I say the future Mr. and Mrs. Ryan Weston? This all started one day when Mr. Ryan Weston was having dinner with my father and me. So there was a lot of talk, talk, business, business, blah, blah. But the important thing was, that through all of Ryan's long, cupcake, cuddly days, he was really lonely. He didn't exactly say it, but I knew. It was totally obvious, trust me. So I made sure the next time we all got together, he got to meet my very dear and very single friend, Annie. A little push here, a little plant there, and magic. Hello, Emma. What, are you too lazy to walk over here? I'm too busy doing important, boring stuff. Good boy, stay focused. 20 for 20. And speaking of 20, Annie called. Sounded important, want you to call her back. And why are you answering my calls? Because you still haven't hired an assistant yet, which you need to. Are, are you recording this conversation? No. You are aware that recording this conversation without my consent is technically illegal. I am. Hmm. Well, uh, about that assistant position, there's a lot of quality resumes over here, so you should... We'll get back to that later. But for now... Hey, Emma. The amazing, the awesome, the alluring Annie Taylor! By the way, I loved the centerpieces that you picked out for the reception. Very Emma approved. About that. There's something wrong. Well, I don't want you to worry, Annie. I can get you those flowers. I know they're a little rare this time of year, but I'll just call in a favor. It's not that. It's just- Does Ryan still want a shot luge for the reception? Shot luges are so not Emma approved. Emma, I'm thinking about calling off the wedding. Mr. Huff's English Literature class. There are the following uh, lessons. These are all the samples. The Wasteland, Fourth for Nightingale, The Darkling Thrush by Edgar Allan Poe. So if you look at this, uh, uh, these poems, The Wasteland, for example, is a very difficult text. Even experienced teachers will find it hard to teach it effectively uh, to students. So this is a very valuable uh, uh, aid for teachers because this is a very rich poem with a lot of allusions and references and uh, um, uh, intertexts uh, interwoven into this text. So if some expert is able to explain line by line, we find it very useful. So this wasteland, Mr. Huff's English uh, literature class is very useful. Oath to a Nightingale by Keats and uh, The Darkling Thresh by Edgar Allan Poe. All these poems have very nice um, explanations in these uh, videos. Now you have the next uh, uh, source, the Consortium of Educational Communication, CEC. This is also MHRD's uh, wing. The Anglo-Saxon period, Indian English literature, Sarojini Naidu, John Milton, classics of American fiction, literary theory base and superstructure. These are some of the topics, not all, only some I have listed. So these are uh, some of the topics for which you have uh, very good lectures, very informative lectures. So please uh, follow these um, uh, websites. You'll find them very interesting. The next uh, in, uh, interesting resource is BBC documentaries and other documentaries. So Milton's Heaven and Hell, Tale of Charles Dickens. This is a documentary on Charles Dickens. There is another documentary on the brilliant Bronte sisters. Uh, this is a very famous um, uh, YouTube uh, video. This, uh, this, is, uh, this was uh, sponsored by BBC. And here you have uh, a very interesting um, history of the three sisters, uh, Emily Bronte, Charles Bronte, and Anne Bronte. 
so the uh, you they visit the venues associated with these sisters and uh, they have filmed it on those uh, locations so it's a very interesting video it helps you to um, augment your knowledge of uh, the brand state sisters jane austen behind the closed doors by lucy workley this is another uh, bbc sponsored video about jane austen so here also you have the places where uh, jane austen lived they have filmed uh, it in those locations you will also happen to see the desk used by jane austen it's a very interesting uh, video then you have another video on the two, true story of moby dick so now you will see uh, the video on jane austen For Jane Austen, houses and property provided rich material. It's a thread that weaves right through all of Jane's novels. Historian Lucy Worsley explores the places where Austen socialized, lived, and wrote about. For millions of Jane Austen lovers, this item is a holy relic. It's a tour through the spaces that influenced a master. It's beautiful. Jane Austen, Behind Closed Doors. Parthala is a school, PG school, MSRD, uh, production of courses for PG students. The main aim of Vidya Mitra is to produce new courses for PG students. Some of the courses are Feminism and Cultural Studies, Post-Colonial Studies, Robert Browning, Pygmalion. These are the names of some of the courses. Um, make use of them because they are very useful for PG students. So now we have come to the conclusion. Students, you know very well that the internet may be available to the privileged few, but if it is made available to everyone, it will bridge the gap between financial backgrounds and the quality of education. Everybody can access good quality education. So it may be recommended um, that the government um, should make it available, but should make the internet connectivity available to all um, people in India so that everybody has free access to the internet. And like in Tamil Nadu, if all the students are given this uh, laptop uh, and this free internet connectivity, then they can access this uh, uh, wealth of information available and this will definitely bridge the gap between uh, different financial backgrounds so it provides equal opportunity quality education for all authentic models are provided imagine him um, addressing a rural student so and the rural student has access to uh, a native um, uh, Britishers pronunciation so a British teacher uh, is uh, accessible. Uh, her lectures are accessible. Her teaching is accessible to a rural student in India. So that, that student gets uh, first-hand information about authentic English pronunciation. So authentic models are provided. Sharing knowledge resources with the global community. So some countries are rich in resources and they are able to share with the other poorer nations, underdeveloped countries or developing countries. So um, this topic, I think, was very useful to you. I hope you uh, found it very um, interesting. Uh, please do visit those websites I have recommended. And you also look for other um, websites and make sure that you share with your friends. Uh, again, once again, I thank uh, Dr. Selby for this opportunity. Thank you.